Come on, Jim. <laughs> well, welcome to Highland Avenue United Brethren Christmas Eve candlelight service. We are so glad you guys made the trip here. I know it's very encouraging for me to be able to hang out with people who have affection for God and Jesus Christ. It's my prayer that you find tonight uplifting, that you leave with that warm fuzzy that you get at Christmas time, right? That only that you can get at Christmas time. Now, we're going to have some special music tonight. We're going to have some very talented singers standing up here belting it out. We're going to have a final, final candle lighting ceremony. We're also going to have a very short message, and then we'll finish the night by singing the Silent Night by candlelight without music. So we get to really hear how well you sing. Because there'll be no music to camera plus. Now, if you don't have a candle right now, please make sure you get one before we sing that last song, because that's been tradition in this church. I'd like to open this service tonight with prayer. So let's go to prayer and invite our Father to join our service. Please bow your head. Let's ready ourselves for worship tonight. Oh, Father, hallowed be your holy, holy, holy name. We come to you tonight as a body of believers who love you and your son, Jesus. And it's our desire to praise and worship you both in a mighty way tonight. Father, we invite you into our service. Please hear our praise tonight as we pray that you are well pleased with our worship of you. Father, we celebrate tonight your righteousness, your plan of salvation for all. We celebrate your love that you sent to us 2,000 years ago, Father, and that changed the world. <clears throat> oh, Father, we do not have the words. We do not have enough vocabulary to express our gratitude, Father, for the love you have shown us by sending us your lamb, the one slain. Father, we ask for your blessing tonight, and we ask that you also bless those who are not here with us to celebrate. And Father, we thank you. Thank you for the blood of your Son who was slain for us. Thank you, Father, for loving us beyond measure. In the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, amen. amen. All right, Brenda, let's listen to Brenda sing. She's going to bounce out some good stuff here.
to become children of God. Tonight, we celebrate the true light of the world that has come to us to defeat darkness. We celebrate that all who receive him and that all who believe in his name have now received the right to become children of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father. He is the true light of the world. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, praise be to your name, for you are holy, holy, holy. We thank you, Father, for sending us the light of the world to conquer darkness so that we may be in your presence someday. We celebrate the newborn baby's arrival, understanding he is your plan of salvation for us. Thank you for loving us, Father. We are eternally grateful for your compassion and mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Larry and Ina. That's nice and bright right now. <laughs> so, thank you. All right, we have some more music coming your way. So, Miss Brittany and Mr. Hunter, please step forward. <laughs> Singing one of my favorite songs. Like this. 
<laughs> now, how can not? How can God not be pleased with that little boy singing, right? I mean, that's that's fantastic. So, what a great segue, Miss Brenda, to finish up our fine, our special music tonight. Come on, Brenda, you can battle it out. Right here, so. <laughs> I have to say, I feel rather slighted. It wasn't in my contract to get cute little kids singing. I haven't discussed that. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
good singing, huh? Yeah. Yes. Man, I'm kind of jealous. I can say it. I wish I could sing. <laughs> so, uh, thank you, Brenda, Brittany, and Hunter, and Briar, for your talents tonight. I, uh, you know, and Jerry, Jerry and I to thank you for this final ca uh, candle lighting. Um, it, it's a big deal to me if we please God, and I just, I just have to believe He's well pleased with what's going on. Because, and then, you know, I'm cynical a little bit with the world out there. When I hear that little boy sing it, <laughs> kind of just melts me in anyway. So it takes away some of that cynicism from me. So, alrighty, friends, let's get going here. Um, let me pray for the message, friends. Please bow your head with me real quickly. Father, I come to you now asking for your blessing and your help on this message. Father, please guide me and keep me on track to accurately speak the truth. Oh, Father, please help me stand out of the way of your words and your intent tonight. This night is about worship of you and your Son and nothing else. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and compassion you have shown me and everyone in this room. Amen. So what's the big deal about tonight, friends? What's the big deal? Why are you even here? Why are you here tonight? Now, I remember as a kid, I had to go to Christmas Eve service with my mom, and I didn't want to do it. I did not want to do it. I thought it was boring. I thought it just got in the way of what's really, really important, and that's what? Presence, right? That's the most important thing in life, at least for me at that time. So honestly, it wasn't a big deal to me back then. So what makes it a big deal now? It's a big, de big deal now because I understand something. I understand that the gifts that I received back then, they don't even come close to giving me the warm fuzzy that I get. When I understand that I have been given the greatest gift ever. The greatest gift ever given to mankind. This gift has something to do with that guy right there, right? Christ is born in that event right there. And because of this gift, I now have the greatest hope, the greatest peace, the greatest joy, and the greatest love all packaged in one bundle, right? And that's who? The Messiah, Jesus Christ. So, here we are sitting in this church on Christmas Eve. We're here to celebrate this gift, just like a lot of us have done every year, right? Every year we get together to do this. We share this celebration on the same night as what? As gift giving with our family. As exchanging many, many gifts that's going to go on tonight. Now, I want to give you a snapshot of some past Christmases at Papa Dad's house. Now, it's amusing to me to think of this. And the family's here, some of the family's here, and they're going to know what I'm talking about. But our family gift-giving event with the grandkids and all the kids get together, it's something that I'm going to talk about. That's how much it impacts me. It probably impacts your life with your family as well. Now, typically what you would see at Papa's dad's house in years past on Christmas would be wrapping paper, bundled up like a basketball, flung across the room right into a makeshift trash bag. Pretending like we're the Jayhawks or we're the Wildcats playing basketball or something like that. There would be stress in the air, friends. At Christmas night, there would be stress in the air because one of the grandkids would think it's taken way too long for their turn to open that present. Way too long. So, And then more stress would be added with Grandma Vicky, right? Grandma Vicky would be in the background and she'd be smiling at all this chaos with her grandkids going on. But secretly... She's stressing out because somebody's throwing away one of those 10 cent bows that you get. Right? <laughs> so, so there's stress going on there. I mean, apparently they're made of gold or diamonds. I don't know what it is, but we have buckets of bows at our house. All right? So she was definitely not going to be happy, happy when that happened. And then, of course, there would be a huge panic by someone in the audience, someone in the group. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because the world was going to end. Because why? Because we didn't have the right batteries. Right? Whatever gadget it is that we open, nobody could find that right 9-volt battery or whatever it is. Or perhaps something had to be assembled, and it was just going to take way too long for that to happen. So there's more stress in the air. So that's kind of a snapshot we go on at Papa Dad's house. It's, I joke about it, but the truth is it's a very joyous time for me and our family. It is full of happiness and love, just like your family, right? It's a great day or night whenever you decide to do this. But here's what is also sad about Christmas, friends, because there is sadness. A lot of people are going to be duped tonight. They're going to be duped tonight and tomorrow because they think that that present that they're going to unwrap is the greatest gift ever. 
And it's sad and it's true, but in 10 days from now, they're going to have forgotten about that widget that they just unwrapped. They've already moved on to the next best thing, whatever that is. What's sad is that not once did they even foster a thought about the true greatest gift ever. Now, I've received some fantastic gifts in my life. There's no doubt about it. So why is that gift of Jesus Christ better than my first BB gun? That was a good gift. Why is the gift of Jesus Christ more fantastic than the ice fishing trip in Minnesota that Chris and Chase took me on? That was a fantastic gift. Jesus Christ is the greatest gift because I discovered that there is a gift out there that I cannot get on my own. And I can't get it from you. I can't even make this gift. I can't buy it. I can't earn it. I can't receive it in a present from anyone. Come to find out, though, I really, really want this gift. In fact, there is no other gift that could possibly be given to me that I want more than this one. Now, I'm a human being. There are things that I'm selfish about. There are some things I am very selfish about. And I'm selfish about this gift. What I want is what I want. And what I really, really, really want is to talk to God face to face. That's what I want. What I really want is when I die, I want to bow on my knees and worship the Creator of all things. I want to worship Him forever and ever. I do not want the other alternative. And we know what that is, right? We know what the other alternative is. So do you guys want the same gift? I do. I mean, I want this gift. Do you want to talk to God face to face? In my quest to find a way to get this gift, I found out that this gift was conditional. If I did not meet the conditions, I couldn't get my wish to stand in front of God. I couldn't stand in front of God just because I wanted to? Something's wrong with life if I can't get what I want. Why couldn't I do that? Why can't I get what I want with God in this particular case? Well, here's why, friends. Because I offended the very supernatural being that I want to spend eternity with. That's why. I have offended Him. In fact, every one of us has offended Him in this room. Every one of us. Now, 25 years ago, I was in desperation mode. Because I found out that God would not allow me to commune with Him just because I wanted to. I learned that if God did not intervene, offer reconciliation, I would never get my wish. I would never realize a redemption that results in standing in front of God Almighty and giving Him the glory that He deserves. But God showed me favor. He showed me favor. The greatest gift was given to me many years ago Right there on that altar on my hand, that man right there. So I got the gift. I did get it. But I have to tell you guys something. Here's the truth, right? Because we're about truth around here. Even though I wanted this gift, at the same time, I really didn't want it. Ouch. I thought this gift was going to take the fun out of my life. I thought this gift was going to turn me into a fuddy duddy and rob me of my happiness. Now, why did I think that, friend? Why would I think the greatest gift ever would rob me of my happiness? Here's why. Because I like sin. That's why. I like sin. And I like being self-righteous, too. That's why I was a sinner. I like all the things that are opposite of the righteousness of God. So even though I accepted that gift back then, it was kind of hard. It was kind of hard to do it. But, as with any and many situation in my life, where I think I know something, something about something, come to find out I was completely wrong. Completely wrong. Turns out that the opposite happens when I accepted the greatest gift. Turns out that by accepting the greatest gift ever, I gained the hope, the joy, the peace, and the love that 